Bayuna, and good morning, everybody. This is a, an exciting weekend conference, and uh, I am joining from Saturday night in Canada. So this is our our crazy pandemic world where we're in different time zones and different parts of the world, yet it seems as though we are we are all together, which which is looking at things on the bright side. So what I will uh, talk today and thank you for the introduction, both to myself, uh, as well as to the SA Jack software platform, which I'll, I'll talk a little bit about today. Um, uh, again, to reiterate, so I'm I'm Lindy Letahowski. I was a high school English teacher, and then I went off and, and did graduate school, uh, including a PhD and postdoc and, and all of the uh, alphabet soup after one's last name that you can get, and I became an English professor. Uh, and it was really in response to teaching English, uh, both at the high school and at the tertiary at the college and university level, um, that I really started to zero in on academic writing and the pedagogy that informs teaching academic writing as an area um, that I wanted to dive into and really um, make an intervention in the technological space. And so that happened pre-pandemic uh, and then now as um, composition teachers, English language teachers, English for academic purpose teachers are finding themselves with the extra challenge of teaching writing online. Um, I've been able to sort of develop and hone some tips and tricks of the trade. Uh, are you hearing me fine or is anything sort of jerky or, or sounding weird? It's okay, thank you. All's good. good. Okay, All's okay. Good. Perfect. I just thought now is a good time to double check in case all you were hearing was that, 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 that. it would be horrible for, for me to carry on in that fashion. So um, we've got that um, a bit of a background. So out of all of the things that um, I, I would love to talk to you about today, I'm zeroing it in on um, academic writing and it's and it's for the really the intermediate level students uh, today. So the they already have fairly um, robust capacity with the English language, um, but it's that higher level writing at the academic level. So this is either higher uh, high school students, so those as well who may be thinking about um, university or college abroad, or those who are already in university or college courses taking English language um, classes. So that's kind of what, what we're looking at. And then of course, those are the students. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in the teachers and, and what to do for those of you who find yourselves with those kinds of students. And so typically um, in an academic uh, teaching context, what happens is that students, um, oops, sorry, I'm clicking weird stuff. There we go. Um, is that teachers often um, are teaching writing in such a way that you, you stand in front of a classroom, you're able to model good teaching practice, you're able to have that back and forth with students, both verbally and often in writing. Um, and that helps to set the stage for what constitutes good academic writing. And by good academic writing, that's typically going to be either expository in nature, so it's going to explain and expand on an idea or concept. It might be argumentative in nature, so it's going to try to persuade a reader of something. Those are two of the more common uh, pieces of academic writing in the liberal arts or social sciences. So that's when I'm talking about academic writing, that's generally the genre in which I'm speaking. And so Typically what happens when we are teaching composition courses, um, there's a lot we can do in person and that becomes a little bit more difficult uh, in an online environment, particularly because, um, you know, as I'm doing now, there is there can be that tendency for um, the instructor to do a lot of the talking and it can be harder to bring out um, independent thinking on the part of students and that independent thinking ends up being the building blocks for what will go into compiling the piece of academic writing. And so um, what we'll talk about today or what I'll kind of show you are some ways in which you can make teaching writing online 
um, really powerful, actually, and, and sort of beyond just, um, say, a Google Doc, where it requires you to be there in some form, either asynchronistically or synchronistically with your students working in a one to one basis, which can be very difficult to scale. So if you have classes with 30 students, or if you're teaching big, like has this picture, you know, a big lecture hall of students, um, you can't be teaching writing where it's you in a one to one like, okay, I'm looking at your Google Doc next. Now I'm looking at your Google Doc next. Now I'm looking at yours. That's not sustainable. Uh, I'm also not convinced that it's good um, pedagogy. So as as we know, if we've been teaching English, um, often what's really key for students is when they can correct their own mistakes. Um, and so if we're using a Google Doc, and I, I mean, not slighting Google Docs, um, please don't sue me, Google. Uh, I'm just using that as an example of one of those technologies, which is great, but it has limited efficacy in certain use cases. And so if you're, you're using a, a Google Doc, the temptation as the instructor is to go in and fix, whether it's grammatical mistakes or structural mistakes, and the students are only too happy to have you do that work for them because obviously it's much better um, to, to get it right or to get somebody to do that editing work. And so what um, in creating the SA Jack software, which I'll go into um, as one of the tools or one of the ways to bring in some of the online teaching pedagogy um, can allow you to teach students at scale. So it's not just one to one instruction with respect to writing, but also in a way that they learn to correct their own mistakes along the way. And that's that real learning process, as opposed to focusing just on producing something which is good, in which case um, you, the instructor, can somehow uh, end up being co-opted into doing more than your fair share of work. And, and the difficulty is if we're the ones uh, teaching writing and teaching English and teaching academic writing, chances are we know how to do it. Uh, that's why we're the ones in the, in the front of the classroom. Uh, and so it's um, about how to bring that learning out for students. Uh, and obviously they learn by doing. And the more we can set up a framework and an environment for them to do that and do that well, the more successful, uh, the more chances of success they have. All right, so let's move this to the next. Oh, there's my little arrow. Next slide. Um, so here are just some simple, uh, typical elements of teaching writing. And this will be uh, obviously a review in many cases, but it sets the stage for what I'll go through when I, when I get to the SA Jack platform, kind of a bit of a demo, a bit of a walkthrough. But this is important as well, because not only does it set the stage, but it gives us a shared vocabulary of what the writing process really involves. And so typically, a writing process involves acquiring or attaining content in some fashion. So that could be something as simple as I've done a Google search on whatever, you know, if my topic is, um, you know, ancient Roman history, uh, I can research ancient Roman history. It could be something that is happening in the class where my teacher is teaching me about ancient Roman history. So I'm taking um, notes on a regular basis based on lectures or, or class content, but it's the content are basically the ideas, the things, the subject matter that you're going to write about. The second piece that often goes into um, teaching writing or uh, composition pedagogy is modeling of some sort. So as teachers, as instructors, as professors, um, good pedagogy often involves modeling the skill that students must master. So demonstrating the components of good writing. And that may mean that we bring journal articles in for them to analyze. It might mean that we have um, our own uh, smart board at the front of the room and we can work through the component parts of a piece of writing might be that we begin by giving them you know an introductory paragraph and you workshop it there are various ways in which you can model uh, good writing um, but again it's hard to move that kind of modeling uh, online the third component of teaching good writing and of course the writing process is that students have to do you know, the writing process has many steps, but ultimately students have to write. And, and we all know the more they write, the better they will, they will become. And so the more that we as instructors, that we as educators can make that experience of writing uh, feel satisfying, 
and feel as though the students are achieving what they want to achieve in their writing goals and aims, then the more likely they are to write again and again and again, which is going to be key for them to be able to improve. And then, of course, um, revising along the way. So you can have uh, summative feedback. So that could be peer review. It could be you giving students feedback. It could be, um, you know, that they have to submit it to an online database. There are a variety of ways in which they can get feedback along the way uh, before they submit something and they get their final, you know, hey, this is an, an A paper or, or, or unfortunately, it's not an A paper. Um, and again, it's easy to think, and especially even just in that last slide, you know, I have these nice little sort of four parts of teaching writing or four parts of the writing process. And it's easy to think of them as sort of flowing, you know, you acquire the content, okay, I went to class, I took notes, you know, in class, there was modeling, my teacher was showing me what to do and what constitutes good writing. Now I've gone home and I've started writing my first draft. Okay, revising, I've submitted it for some peer review activity. I've done some fixes that my peers suggested and now I'm submitting it to get the grade that I want. Um, and of course, in reality, writing and teaching writing isn't always that smooth. So there's a lot of back and forth. And, and even this slide doesn't always capture the iterative nature. So sometimes there's acquiring the content, and then you're in class and your professor is modeling, say, one piece of it. So they, you may have your introductory paragraph is something that is modeled at first. Then you go back and acquire more content, and then there's modeling of the body paragraph of your essay. And then you start writing for the first time, and then you go back and you realize, actually, I need more content. I don't know enough about ancient Roman history, and I have to research some more. And so you go backwards again. So it's a lot messier in reality uh, to go from having the kernel of an idea, whether it's a student's own original idea, or whether it's an assignment that a teacher or a professor has given to a student. Um, it's a lot more iterative and messy to be able to take that idea and ultimately work it through a process so that at the end of the day, there is a solid, logically progressing, coherent academic essay that adheres to the typical standards of, say, an Anglo-American scholarly piece of writing or that would at some point, you know, if the student goes on to become a professional academic, it could be published in an international journal. That's kind of like the gold standard of what these pieces of academic writing are leading up to. And so how do we take this kind of messy, iterative pro uh, process and make it a little bit more systematic and also collapse some of these component parts so it doesn't feel like the content happens, uh, the content acquisition, sorry, happens separate from the modeling and the teaching, which is separate from the writing, which is also separate from the getting feedback. Is there a way to bring all of those component pieces together so that while you're thinking about content, you're also getting modeling tips and guidance from your teacher and professor that's happening simultaneous to you writing, and then you're able to get feedback kind of in a similar environment or ecosystem. And so that's really what the, the SAJAX software platform, which Ayuna and the Mango Steams team has brought me here to talk about, that's really what it aims to do, is to take these disparate parts of the writing process or the teaching the writing process and collapse them into a kind of unified methodology, which is both very satisfying for the student writer, but also very usable for the um, teacher of writing so that it's a platform where the instructor can say, okay, go and use this template and write your essay on ancient Roman history. Um, and then the student is having guidance along the way. So, Without further ado, I'm going to move out of this kind of setting the stage, 
groundwork, you know, hey, this is what we're, we're talking about. We're talking about sort of intermediate academic writers who have a facility with English or, a, or somewhat of a facility with English, but are really focusing on how do they hone that academic writing for high school and then university and college? And how do we take the component parts of good composition pedagogy and combine it into sort of one methodological experience that can also um, be experienced by both the instructor and the student in an online environment. So that's kind of the, I've cleared away the brush and said, okay, here's, here's the path that we're going to walk upon. And now I'll move out of my little slideshow and over into my essay jack window so that we can start having a look at how all of that actually um, gets enacted. So are you seeing something that has purple and pink and teal and looks like the SA Jack dashboard? Yes. All right, yes. perfect. So now I've logged into um, my SA Jack account. And what SA Jack is, and I mean, sometimes I, I wish we had named it something else because it now does so much more than, than just essays. But a couple of years ago when we, when we started, we were like, well, it's raw, raw. It's going to be, you know, the, the tool to do all things essay. And then uh, as I think this happens uh, with, with software, um, you, as you start developing, you find other use cases and you expand and, and, and things sort of outgrow their earliest days. So who knows, the, the name may change one day, but for now uh, it is it is SA Jack. And, and that does signal as well that it is for scholarly writing and this or academic writing. Um, it's writing that happens in a school context. Um, and so there are a couple of different uh, features and functions which are really helpful for instructors. So along the left, just to sort of orient, you know, what, what SA Jack does, and then I'll jump in and sort of give it a go. Along the left, you'll see sort of typically what an educator can do. So there's essay drafts, and that's both students and educators can create drafts, pieces of writing. And that's what I'll show today. Um, templates, the templates are the building blocks upon which the essay drafts are built. So there will be an academic essay template, a compare contrast essay template, a business proposal template, a lab report template. So those templates um, are the framework for the different genres of writing. And as an educator in the essay Jack world, uh, you, can, you can customize it entirely. So we've got all those off the shelf templates, uh, but as an educator, you might say, well, you know, in my class, I, I want to make a custom template on ancient Rome and that's, you know, so I want it to just be about that particular topic. Or if there are um, certain kinds of vocabulary that you reinforce and use again and again in your classes, you may want to include that in your template. So if you think back to, as I say, the clearing the brush and sort of setting the stage of, of where we were going to traverse today, um, if you're thinking about the modeling, so that's the teaching piece. So if in my teaching practice in a classroom, I'm typically saying certain things and reinforcing certain vocabulary. I may be talking about a thesis statement a lot. I may talk about introductory paragraphs. Um, then that's the kind of language that I'll want to be modeled in my custom templates. Uh, so again, that's how we're starting to collapse some of that uh, teaching pedagogy into one platform. And then of course the reviews. So once a student has say written an essay draft, on either an essay jack template or a custom template, they can submit it to somebody that they're in a class with for feedback. So that could be I'm submitting it to my my peer, my colleague in the class and getting peer feedback, uh, or it could be I'm submitting this to my instructor and I'm getting some either formative feedback along the way uh, or summative feedback if it's, if it's a finished product and I'm going to get it graded. Uh, and that can be very helpful, particularly for say progressive assignments. So, all right, I want, once you have your introductory paragraph, submit it to me for feedback before you go on. Once you have an outline of your essay, submit it to me before you go on, you know, and you can have those, you can have those checkpoints uh, built in along the way, but the students are still getting guidance. And then as well, as an educator, you can upload resources. So many of us uh, who have been teaching writing, like we've developed things along the way. They might be our Word documents, our various memos, our tips. We might have vocabulary lists, PDFs. Um, we may have our standard 
uh, URL links to other resources that we find very helpful. There are writing centers at various universities that have tips and, and often we want to share those with our students. And so for Essay Jack, because um, we developed this like I was a teacher and I was a professor. So I'm very sympathetic to the fact that no instructor wants to have their lifetime's career of work um, sort of disregarded by software that comes in and says, oh, we'll do everything for you. I mean, that's just not the way most, most teachers and instructors um, work. We, we want the good work that we've developed over our career to continue to find articulation, even in an online environment, even in a software environment. So uh, SA Jack has the resources, a component where you can add various resources. That's entirely up to you and share those with your students. So again, and once you've added them, they're in there forever. They're sort of you can add or, or delete them, but um, you can just sort of add them uh, as and when you like. And that can be, as I say, your own custom resources or particular links to, to other people. So that, and then courses. Courses is just a, from an administrative perspective. That's how you group collections of students so that not everybody in, in your uh, teaching repertoire is going to see everything that you create. So you can have resources that are for class A and not class B and other resources that are for class B and not class A. And that's, uh, and that, you know, sort of syncs up with any um, like learning management system. So if you're using SAJAC in the context of a university or a college and you have Moodle or Canvas or Blackboard, um, those students from your learning management system will be sort of rostered into the specific course. So anyway, that again, I started off with a bit of a slideshow, clear the brush, this is where we're going to go. Now it's the OK essay, Jack, this is the platform and this is what we're looking at. And all of that is a big long prelude to actually getting in to showing what these templates can do and how they operate. So I'll go in now and this is really the sort of meat of where we, we want to go. So I will, as a student, I will pretend that I'm going to create an essay draft. And so as you see here, there are a variety of these different off-the-shelf templates that I can start to choose from. I'll choose the academic essay. Uh, it's our sort of most um, robust and advanced. Uh, so if we, we wanted something uh, more simple, I could choose a five paragraph essay or a narrative essay, compare contrast. But as I say, I'll choose the academic essay so that you can really see um, what the most advanced or most complex uh, template is able to do to bring in writing pedagogy. So this is my essay, let's say, since I started off with ancient Rome, that's, you know, so clothing, in ancient Rome. Okay, so that's what my topic is going to be. Um, let's pretend I have to write 800 words on this. Uh, so I've just sort of revised some of the, the basic templates I'm, I'm writing on ancient Rome. On the left is a student, I immediately can see the essay in miniature. So I've got the introduction, which is made up of the topic, background, thesis statement, a bit of a roadmap. I've got my body, which is broken down into five body points. Um, each of those body points itself is further broken down, topic sentence, background, evidence, explanation, a concluding sentence that ties back to the thesis, and then my concluding paragraph. So I've got my essay in miniature that I can already sort of see the structure and the framework. Um, I will, of course, as, as a, a good little keen student, start off with the topic. I'll click on that and it opens up this text box. And so again, in terms of that um, teaching pedagogy, so it's broken the um, large writing task down into small chunks so that the student isn't overwhelmed by a sort of blank page staring at them, which particularly in an on, uh, uh, a mostly online environment can be very overwhelming. Students don't know what they don't know. And without the personal touch reinforcement of classroom engagement, it can be very disorienting. So we break the essay down into its component parts. There's a focus in question, so jump right in. What's your focus? There's also sentence starters. Um, and again, these differ 
for each of the templates and they're also entirely customizable by an instructor so i might say you know an important question in the study of ancient rome oops is whether or not men and women were equal as demonstrated in their clothing. Okay, I'm making this up as I go along, but this is sort of our, our broad topic. We're going to talk about equality and we're going to talk about that as it uh, pertains to clothing in ancient Rome. And as I was typing, you're seeing, you know, again, uh, the, the browser based spell check operating, we also have an integration with Grammarly. So for students who, who are also using Grammarly, it works seamlessly together. So again, that experience of composition is not um, stalled or slowed by students who have um, anxiety over their linguistic capacity or facility. So they can continue to write. Um, and we've got sort of various tips as well if they don't know what the topic is. You know, we've got a little video, it's me, uh, and, and again, just sort of outlining for students what constitutes a topic. Once they've got their topic, an important question, study of ancient Rome, we now get background. Okay, so background again, what is background? We've got the tips over here. So what is background? Information that set the, sets the stage for whatever comes next. What should I write? Is there special vocabulary or information? And we also have sentence starters. So some history of this topic includes looking at the typical toga as the symbol of Roman attire. There were different types of togas for different genders and classes. All right, great. So we're looking at Rome. We're zeroing in and narrowing down that topic to be looking at togas. Um, maybe I should define the toga. Toga is a loose piece of fabric draped over the body. Hey, okay, that's not, I can probably get a better definition, but for the sake of argument, you know where I'm going with this. Another feature that I'll just show as I'm typing along is that students can also use split screen. So as they're working through each section, they can use this sort of sneak peek split screen preview so they can see uh, what looks more and more like an essay um, as they are composing. So as I continue on, I get to the next section, which is the thesis statement. And the thesis statement, if I want to open up those tips again, what is the thesis statement? It's the major claim I want to defend in my essay draft. It's the statement I want to take. Um, what do I want to convince somebody? And then there are tips about what constitutes a good thesis statement. And again, um, trustee Lindy to sort of hammer home for students who are better with video uh, in terms of their learning. And again, all of this is customizable for the instructor. So if an instructor says, great, I want to use SA Jack and it's sort of off the shelf templates, it combines that sort of modeling and teaching with the writing process. So students are getting tips as they write, as opposed to tips in the classroom and then writing at home, they're getting it collapsed in together. Um, but if the educator is saying, you know what, the off the shelf tips are great, but I can do even better. I want to upload my own YouTube videos of myself teaching, or I want to add my own tips. That's entirely customizable. So now for this student who's looking at uh, ancient Roman clothing, this essay explores the male and female version of the toga to suggest that Roman men had greater freedoms as represented in their clothes, right? Uh, as well, at this point, I can always, or at any point in any of these text boxes, I can add citations. So if I'm quoting from um, a book or a book chapter, or website, article, um, all of these uh, options exist 
uh, for the students to be able to add a citation. Let me just question here. So I'll see if I can see. Can I show how I changed the form of, yes, I will. Um, so I, I can't, I'll, I will get to how to double space it and format it at the end. Uh, and I will definitely show you how as an instructor, you can customize it. So what we're getting at first is first the sort of just the rough draft, and then we'll get to the, how you change the font, how you make it double spaced, how you, um, uh, decide whether it's going to be MLA or Chicago Manual of Style. Uh, once we've got um, our, and again, we'll, we can do this sort of sneak peek or even uh, a bigger version, I've got, you know, the starting point of my introductory paragraph. And now I can move into the sort of roadmap. So what are the points that I will raise? So maybe I'll say something about, you know, the argument begins with looking at royal togas worn by the emperors. And then maybe my second point is uh, the argument then moves on to examine what uh, women wore at home in ancient Rome. And then perhaps subsequent point is to look at men's dress at home. And maybe I don't need so many points. So I'll delete one of those points. My last point is the argument con concludes with, what did I say I was talking about? With a comparison between men and women in ancient Rome. Okay, so I've got um, four points that this essay will raise. What's happened now is it's pulled those points into my introductory paragraph. It's also lifted them out as provisional topic sentences for the body paragraph. So I've got an introductory paragraph, some topic sentences. I can build a provisional conclusion. And at this point here, I'll make this bigger. So now as a student, I have essentially an outline right now and I've, you know, whatever, spent 10 minutes on it. I've written an introduction. It's pulled out um, the sentences for my, or the, at least the ideas for my topic sentences and given me a provisional conclusion. And so I at least now as a student have a roadmap, a guideline for where I'm going to go. At any point, I can send this off for feedback. So if you remember at the beginning, I was like, well, you know, when you're teaching, you can always provide that formative assessment at any point along the way. Um, and I can send this off, say, if it's an outline or an introductory paragraph. So if I decide, okay, I can, um, I, I will send this to myself. The, abil the ability to review your own work is an important skill to have in life. Learn how to do this by sending a review request to yourself. So this is, again, uh, in, in many um, curricular contexts, this skill is called self-editing. Uh, so I'll send that just so that you can see what that interface looks like. I've sent it off to myself for feedback. I can also, and again, at any point, um, sort of download this or export it. I'll download it as a Word document so that I can then sort of answer that question about formatting and, and what it's going to look like. So at any point, let's just for the sake of argument, let's look at it as a Word document. You can see my Christmas newsletter, which I was obviously working on just before this. There we go with our masks, which I will send out to the Christmas family. Oh, now it's gone. You can't see our Christmas newsletter. So this is how uh, in a Word document, SA Jack just sort of plugs it in. You've got your title. If there's a course or instructor, I can now add this in. So English 101. Maybe this is history since I'm talking about ancient Rome. The instructor, Dr. Lindy. Let a house ski, it's due next month. And then I've got my outline. And I can also, at any point, I can sort of change the font, double space this, so that the final polishing can happen outside of the SA Jack interface. So now we'll go back here to look at this draft in process. And now I won't continue sort of building up um, an essay in its entirety uh, for you. 
but I do want to flag some of the other features. So as a student's writing, as we say, we've got their topic, the background, the thesis statement, the sort of roadmap section. And again, the terminology, say if in your class you don't call it uh, the roadmap part of the introduction, you might call it, you know, signposting, you might call it the second part of the thesis statement. Um, some instructors sort of leave this out entirely and the students fill in uh, what comes later uh, afterwards. But now we move down to the body section and as a reminder, each body um, paragraph is a point unto itself. It has a topic sentence, a little bit of background, evidence, explanation, and then it all ties back to the thesis statement. So this topic sentence, once again, is reminding that the argument begins with looking at royal togas worn by the emperors. Again, what is topic sentence? It's like a mini thesis. So as a student, I'd probably revise this, but at least it gives me a placeholder. So if I'm not writing all at one binge moment, I uh, have the reminder that, oh yeah, okay, okay, I was going to focus on royal togas at this point. So now I'm going to provide some background. So once again, um, you know, it's important to know that the emperors dressed differently than regular Romans and slaves and other freed people dressed even more at odds. Okay, so there I perhaps I'm going to spell out and have some quotations and and bring out some of that background. What I wanted to get to is that once we start getting down to evidence and explanation, you'll notice so topic sentences, you know, sort of one text box background is one text box. Evidence and explanation is two text boxes. So what that means is that you cannot have evidence uh, without providing explanation for that evidence. And what evidence is in this context um, is typically going to be material that helps to build the case that the student is writing about. So in this case, it would be evidence, something about clothing in ancient Rome. Uh, but if your topic is traffic or pollution or pandemic responses or any, any topic um, of the day, presumably you will want the student to begin to argue by way of evidence as opposed to merely asserting something. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in Canada at the moment, uh, but Canada is largely influenced as well by what our neighbors to the south do. And so we're very used to hearing a lot of assertions of various facts. And those assertions don't always come uh, supported by evidence. And so that's a real breakdown. So in an academic context, we absolutely don't want to see that. We want our students to learn very early on that if they're going to make a claim, they need to have evidence to support it. So if I'm going to try along with my claim about Roman emperors and what they wore, I am now going to need some kind of evidence. And so I might have, you know, for example, and then I've got some quote from some book that I'm researching, which describes what Roman emperors wear. So I've got my quotation, the title is, you know, Roman emperors clothing. Oops. And the author is some author, and it was published in Rome, let's say, by Penguin in 2020. And the quote is from page 45. Uh, so now I've inserted that quotation um, there. And once I look in the preview, I can see that my citation is being added um, in a list at the bottom. Again, if I want to format that differently, I'd go back to my, my Microsoft Word document uh, once I download this or export this draft from SAJAC and I'd be able to sort of play around with the kind of citation format. So now I move on to the explanation for my evidence which is, you know, why does this evidence matter? Where does it come from? Um, and once again, uh, and I'm not sure if my, my screen, screen resolution is such that you can see this, but it says, how does the evidence support the point? Remember, your point here is the argument begins with looking at royal togas worn by the emperors. And so that's taking the student's own language and uh, 
sending it back to them. So it's saying, okay, stay, basically stay on topic. You said you were talking about royal togas. Are you still talking about royal togas or have you gone off topic? Have you found a quotation that's looking at something else that may well be interesting, uh, but that is off topic? And so again, the student, you know, we'll say this example shows that blah, 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 blah. And then once we get to the concluding paragraph, once again, we have this tip and this prompt that is using the student's own language. So how does your point, the argument begins with looking at royal togas worn by the emperors, support your thesis. This essay explores the male and female version of the toga to suggest that Roman men had greater freedoms as represented in their clothes. So once again, it's sort of trying to keep students focused and on task as they write. So once again, if you remember that like one of the main ideas or one of the dreams for what SA Jack would be able to do for student writers is sort of collapse um, both the teaching of writing with the actual writing process so that you don't have the teaching of writing happening in the class separately and then the writing experience to be this very isolating experience on its own. We're having this combination of these tips and prompts um, auto completing things along the way so now and again uh, I, I can sort of keep going through next point next point next point i think you get uh, the sort of gist of how the sa jack platform in these sort of templated chunks and bits does what it's supposed to do now if you remember i did send the essay uh, to myself to review. So let's have a look at that. It says, Essay Jack has asked you to review their essay draft. And of course, Essay Jack is me. That's you know who I've signed in as. So it's asked me to review my draft. So now I've got the list of all of the essays that people have asked me to provide feedback on. And it says whether I've actually provided the feedback, I've accepted it, but this one's incomplete. This essay has already been reviewed. This one's pending. And so this is the one, oops, this is the one that we want to look at now. I'm going to accept this review. So this is the kind of interface that both an educator and another student, so a peer in my class, will see. So I've got um, ratings over on the right hand side, so I can give an overall review. And there's a definition of what constitutes an overall excellent essay, an overall good essay, an overall average essay, and an overall poor essay. So we can give this one three stars. It plugs in uh, that it's good and a little bit of sort of canned description of what makes good. And then I might say, you know, this is a good outline. Can't wait to read the whole essay when you are done. Great. Um, so you can have those custom comments. And then it breaks down the rest of the essay into component parts. So content, organization, style, and mechanics, so spelling and grammar. And so once again, what constitutes good content? So the ideas are excellent. Are they good? Is there a good background? Uh, and once again, you get the, the sort of canned off the shelf feedback as well as, you know, the, you know, looks like you have some interesting ideas. The ability to write something custom uh, that, that you may want as an instructor. Uh, as, and as well, this is as I was sort of suggesting um, that the temptation with say a Google Doc or Microsoft Words track changes is to make corrections as you see them. What we can do in SA Jack is simply flag where there's an error. So uh, this sentence has a verb problem. Fix it. So I've now flagged that there's an issue here, but I haven't told the student uh, exactly what it is or fixed it for them. And so that's kind of how we can start providing feedback. And let's say I, I finished that review and I, I can send that back um, to the original essayist. So once again, if I go to my dashboard, I've got the clothing in ancient Rome is my essay that's sort of the one that I've most recently worked on. So it's appearing now in my shortcuts. So if I go back and have a peek at that essay, I'll be able to see where and how the feedback was applied. So the first piece I'm seeing here, there's a little red indicator and an indicator, you know, the sentence has a verb problem in it, fix it. So I would go in and make whatever fixes I wanted to as a student and resolve it. 
as well, I can see those overall ratings that I was given. So, you know, overall it's good, content is good. You know, I didn't bother to fill out the rest of it. So those remain empty at the moment. So once again, it integrates that feedback right into the writing process. So that sort of um, the methodology, the workflow from a student's perspective, they go in, they have a template that they're able to use uh, at any point, they can download it and do any final formatting or changes that they want, they can send it off and get feedback. Now I want to look at um, the templates so that you can see as an educator how you have absolute control over all of these um, sort of scaffolded environments for students. So this will be, you know, Sorry, my... Ian, yep. can I just jump in there? Uh, there's a couple yep. of questions. Would you prefer to take the questions at the end? I, 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 some of the let's questions see. kind of relate to what you were just talking about okay, there. Okay, let's see. Okay. Uh, can I show teachers? How teachers can see if a student asks another. Um, so you won't be able to, as a teacher, you won't be able to see if a student asks another student to review her essay. Um, you will simply see uh, who in your classroom has written an essay. And unless they share it with you, you won't know, know if they've shared it with anybody else in their class. And then I don't know if there are other, I don't know, do you have Q&A additional questions over and above the chat or is that it? Uh, we, we will have some time. Okay. Well, yeah. if you uh, want that time. Um, but there was one other question there. And I think you're coming to the template now. But yes. the, the other yeah. question was, um, yeah, okay. Okay, well, where you go. Sorry. Okay. Yep. No problem. All right. Where you go. I like that. All right. So where you go, here I go. So I'll, I'll look at the template and then I will, I'll finish up uh, in just a couple of minutes, but then I'll keep the, um, the, the screen share on so that if remaining questions are, are like technical questions of, can you show me this? Can you show me that? I can, I can quickly jump in and show. So right now I'll say I've, I've put on my teacher hat and I'm going to create a new template. Um, this essay, maybe I just want it to be 200 words. Um, it doesn't need to have five body paragraphs. It just needs to have one. This is going to be like an intro, a paragraph, and a conclusion. I want this to be super simple. Uh, maybe this is going to be for um, an assignment that's like a timed writing assignment that I want them to do very quickly. So they'll have the topic. Um, they won't need it. I can turn off various points, maybe a thesis statement. Maybe I don't even need them to have a roadmap because it's only going to be one point. Um, I'm going to, you know, they won't have any extended background. Uh, I won't have them have more um, evidence. They can turn off any other uh, optional sections. I will turn off so point N is just gives them the option if they want to add more points. I'm going to turn that off entirely so that they're stuck with just writing an intro one. Here, I'll preview it so you can see. So that they're just stuck writing an intro, one body paragraph, and a conclusion. So you can see their introduction, which has the topic, the background, the thesis statement, body point one, and the conclusion. So that's, you know, once again, you can see this is exactly what a student is going to see. But now if I want to go in and not just customize the structure, so not just say, you know, here are the components that I want it to have, but if I want to change everything else. So maybe in my class, I call it introductory paragraph, you know, and I, and I want that language to be reinforced. Uh, and maybe instead of topic, it's, you know, your hook as maybe the way that I teach writing with these particular students is I always say, you wanna hook your reader right at the beginning. So perhaps I wanna foreground that and, and maybe this jump right in, what's your focus is too colloquial and I, I don't want that. So I wanna say, you know, this essay is about traffic patterns. Be clear about what your topic is given that over assignment. So, I want my students to write about traffic patterns and they within traffic patterns, they get to pick their topic. So maybe some of them will be talking about um, pollution and congestion. Some of them will be talking about bike lanes. Some of them will be talking about rush hour, who knows, uh, but I just want them to talk about traffic. And so I can have, uh, I can change the language so that it says that 
entirely. And maybe I want to get rid of these sentence starters or I'll, you know, delete some of them. Maybe I'll keep a couple of them. Maybe I'll write my own uh, traffic matters because uh, traffic patterns are interesting because um, so I've got the ability to change things entirely. I can get rid of these custom tips or leave them. I can add my own, you know, what will you focus on? As I mentioned, if you don't want the sort of built-in um, essay Jack and Lindy tips, you can get rid of that and, and add your own videos. Um, so you have that entire customization capacity. Once again, if I sort of preview and I see what a student sees, I've got the hook, I've got that more short uh, sentence starters, that video no longer appears. So all of that customization takes place uh, in real time, sort of as you, as you go along and then you're able to sort of share this template with your class or you can share it with individual students. So if you have a wide range of student aptitudes and abilities, you may have more intense templates for students who need more guidance and then you may have ones that are really minimal for the students who are already quite advanced themselves and can kind of take things and run with it. So again, you can have that differentiation and once you've done the custom templating, you know, you can use them in multiple classes or revise them ever so slightly um, all on your own. So again, that's I'll go back to the dashboard. We've got the essay drafts, which is students doing their writing. So they write their draft, they can get feedback, they can get tips and prompts and guidance. Um, they can get reviews and feedback from people within the essay Jack environment. Educators can create all kinds of custom templates, resources, as I say, is simply uploading and adding resources uh, for your students or for your own personal reference. And then once the students have, say, finished you know, composing something within SA Jack, they can always export it to Google Docs or Microsoft Word and make it all fancy before they they submit it finally for their their very polished grade if need be. So as I say, I will keep my um, my screen share on, uh, but I'll now sort of see if there are any questions either about sort of use cases for SA Jack broadly speaking or any specific nitpicky questions or just anything else that might pique your curiosity this morning. So thank you. It's really looks really good, I think. Oh, thank you. What, what, one one thing is uh uh my my colleagues and I we're, we're you know, we have uh, students for two and a half years, and uh, by the end, uh, we're we're setting a goal that they'll be able to write a a good five paragraph essay, an academic essay, and then be able to do a presentation about it. So over the two and a half years, the verbal we're, side, we're, yeah, yeah, you know, we're we're having step by step courses and uh, one thing which um, all of us find to be a pain in the neck is just getting the students to get the form right yeah because it, uh, you know writing in Japanese of course is a little bit different so it's it's something uh, conceptual kind of thing yeah. to get yeah. students over so I, I mean I'm noticing how how the uh, essay jack works. It's quite nice that it breaks everything down in there, and and you can have the split screen so they see how they're progressing and it's it, it's showing how it's building up the the argument. That's it's that's really really nice. I'm wondering if you can customize it so it can show how uh, you know each section is going to get indented and how that how that builds up because that that would uh, um, no, not that that's a game breaker. Yeah, but yeah. It just makes it just makes it easier for us to explain it to them. Yeah, <laughs> trying yeah. to explain to them how how that works conceptually. You know, it's always uh, you know difficult. You know. 
Yeah, yeah. And so, um, so, uh, so the answer is yes. Uh, okay. And and the way um, that you would you would do it is you know by showing them a finished like a finished version the example um, yeah. within SAJAX. So I was sort right. of showing the like you know hey here's one in progress. But then if I showed a complete one. And I did that split screen. You'd then see, okay, here, here are where the paragraph breaks are, uh, and here's how. Say, for instance, even if you're talking about one point, but that point has enough elaboration, that one point itself might be two paragraphs, or whatever. And you, and you would see exactly as you're saying that those component parts, um, those paragraph breakdowns, and and how that would all unfold. And then a second um, idea that can be helpful in teaching. Um, a sustained composition unit over time um, is to use SAJAC in uh, progressive scaffolding. So uh, if you remember when I was in the sort of templating and I was saying, oh, you can customize it and turn things off. So what you can do actually is turn everything off except for say the first section and then have the students fill that first section on or fill that first section out. And then you can turn the second section on and they don't have to start anything new it will just in their essay draft suddenly okay. the second section will appear and then the third section you know and so they can really then focus on on one at a time and you as the instructor have the control to sort of turn it on when you feel that they've mastered that kind of first piece so that um has been the way that some of the instructors particularly Whereas you say the conventions of English language writing um, may be a little bit more opaque, um, that that can be really helpful because instead of then having to think about a whole essay and its component parts, it's just sort of bit by bit by bit, which can be a little bit in the early days, a little bit um, less overwhelming. I mean, again, at the end of the two years, you want them to be overwhelmed, but you also at that point want them to have uh, the skill uh, that it doesn't feel overwhelming. Whereas in the early days, um, you know, you're trying to sort of build up confidence and, and make them feel that the, the task that you're setting isn't so uh, impossible. I also was really impressed that uh, you can uh, highlight and give the students a hint about, so that, that, that's the process that we've been doing, but of course, up until this year, we were doing it by hand. Yeah. So we're highlighting things, and we have and we have built up a convention system. So you know, subject verb agreement. You know, we had we built up a system. So you know, not just me. <laughs> yeah. My colleagues yeah. and and so and so that would be this kind of system would be make it you know much easier. Well, that's and 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 to be honest, that. Um, that function or feature came directly from um, English language teachers who were like, you know, we need to be able to flag and hint where things need to be fixed um, without giving it all away. And, and, and as you say, different teachers have their different like codes for things and they're different, you know, and you build that up over time and it becomes, you know, a kind of like, oh, there's a language agreement problem here. And then the student, you know, both has to remind themselves what a language agreement refers to, but then find and identify it and sort of fix it. And, and that's, you know, where they'll, they'll really have that learning and that improvement. All right, are you not? Are we are we getting to the end of time? We are pretty much at the end of time there. Um, so, uh, if you do have any further questions, um, you could go to the uh, the Hangouts room, which I've just put a uh, link to in the chat. Um, or you could uh, drop by into uh, the mango steams uh, exhibit there, which is uh, where Ayuna has uh, put a link to. So um, for the moment, though, uh, because someone will be using this room yep. in the next uh, session, I'd just like to say thank you to Lindy and thank you to Ayuna. Um, if uh, people who are here can turn their mics on and uh, give a round of applause because it was a very, very interesting presentation. Oh, thank thank you. you very much. Yeah.
thanks very much. So enjoy the rest of today and uh, I will get myself out of this room so that the next folks can can hop on board. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you very you, much. And, uh, okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye now.